here's a bowl and make a loop through and then under, around, back through. And this is how, if you approach something, you want to tie a bowline on something, get a nice long piece, put the loop in it, and then go to what you're going to tie a bowline around. That way you have a good start when you get there. Around the back, back through. So this is an example of around this bar. Let's try it again. Let's go through this, this hole right here. So imagine you're approaching a boat and you want to tie a bowline to the trailer eye. When you approach the trailer eye, get a length, put the loop in it, now you're ready. Now you go in through the loop, out, you go over this one, under, around the back, over these two, and back through. This bowline is good for pretty heavy loads. It'll jam if it gets too high of a load on it, but we have not for that. A bowline on a bike ties a loop in the middle of a line. So you can go right in the middle of a line. This is a good way to make a bridle for assistance towing. Grab a big bite like this, and now do your bowline with the bite. So you make your loop, just like a regular bowline, and then through the loop with the bite around both of them and then back through just like a regular bowling but you're doing it with the bite of line right in the middle of the line and you can see how that would make a good bridle look what we look what we did we made a bridle with a bowling on a bite The cleat hitch. Let's take a deep dive into the cleat hitch. Two different types of cleat hitches. So the first type is what you'll usually see. You approach the back side of the cleat. You see this angle needs to be the sharpest angle you can make. This is it, the correct. And if you were to go around this way, it'll still work, but it's, I wouldn't consider it textbook. So go around this way, do at least the 360 and then around and then lock it, make it. Now here's the problem. If there's a very high static load on this, something's pulling very hard consistently, and you try to unlock this, the force will actually just take up the slack and keep it locked. And you don't wanna put your fingers in here with a high load and start getting your fingers in here. So let's look at a solution to this. This is another option for cleat hitching. I've been consulting with an expert in the industry and he said I never lock my cleat hitches. So let's see what he's talking about. Here's another example. So again, we go around the cleat, this sharp angle here, do a 360, and now just figure eights. Just figure eights. And then make sure your bitter end is somewhere where it's not gonna get free and just monitor this. You can pull as hard as you want on this and it will never lock. And it will always come undone. So even if there's a very high static load on this, you can still just undo it and you'll end up getting purchase power on this cleat for when the pull, when it does start to slip, doesn't matter, you can still undo it. So that's your other option for cleat hitching. Let's look at two different hitches that do the same thing, a clove hitch and a round turn and two half hitches. The clove hitch, it's two successive half hitches. That's the definition. You go around and the secret here, keep it open like this and go around and come back through. This is a clove hitch. It'll always look like this. They'll run parallel and opposite like this. So now let's look at a round turn and two half hitches. So it'll go around the object. Here's a turn. Now all the way around, that's a round turn. And then two half hitches. Make like 
sometimes they say make a four and go through, pull this one, and then another half hitch, same direction. That's a round turn in two half hitches. And remember I said that a clove hitch was two successive half hitches? If you look, those two half hitches, what do you see? It's a clove hitch. A sheet bend will connect two lines. A single sheet bend will connect two lines of similar diameter, and a double sheet bend is better for connecting lines of different diameters. So let's look at these two. We have two, these are similar diameter. Let's try a single sheet bend in this. So you just take, make a bite like this, come around it, right? Go around and then under itself. That's a sheet bend. Now, sheet bend is good for lines of similar diameter. Double sheet bend is good for lines of different diameters. So let's look at a double sheet bend and we'll connect a much smaller line. So again, we'll start with a large bite. Now here, this line's a lot smaller. You can see it's a lot smaller. So we go in, around the back, and then you simply just go under it and back around it and under it again. This is a double sheet bend. And this will join lines of unequal sizes and keep it secure. Excellent. Let's make a carrick bend. A carrick bend is used to connect hawsers or the tow line end for end. It's meant for large diameter or rigid lines. It's, it's a good way to connect them. So you start, make a loop similar to a bowling. I'm doing it on the deck so you can see it easy. I'm doing it with two different line colors so you can see it easy. You go under, under that loop. And now you go over the bitter end under the standing part, over, under itself, and then over this. Pull it kind of tight here, leave night a lot of slack because when you tighten this, it's gonna flip. Watch. There, now it's tight. This and this, they both kind of look like mini bowlins. That's a carrot bend. 